Hopefully you are viewing your paid and organic channels as complementary channels and not competing channels. Because when we link Google Search Council with your Google Ads account, we get access to the paid and organic reports for all your text ad campaigns. The first thing I want to show you in this video is how you can link these two accounts together. And it's a little bit tricky because you have to have certain permission levels in each of the accounts to make this happen. And last, we will look at what insights we can pull from these reports after you have the accounts linked. Before you can view the paid and organic report in Google Ads, you have to have Search Console linked with Google Ads. And right away, I have to say that you must have admin access to Google Ads in order to do this step. If you're in an MCC account, you'll be fine. But if you are using an individual login, again, you have to have admin access. So if you don't have that, you're going to have to reach out to the admin and have your permission settings changed. To link these accounts, let's go to Tools and Settings. And then under the Setup column, we see Linked Accounts. If we scroll to the bottom, there we see Search Console. Do you want to link Search Console to Google Ads? Well, of course we do, so let's link them. The first step, we'll be entering the URL for the site that we want to link to this account. There's our website, so now we can click Continue. The first link I added was www.paidmediapros.com, but it's also recommended to add a second version without the www. Now in our case, we see the status between both of these URLs is linked. In this case, it's showing that the linking between Search Console and Google Ads in our case worked. And let me show you why that worked. If I hop over into Google Search Console, we already have this website claimed, and that is a second mandatory step. Your account must also be an owner on the Search Console account. And if for whatever reason there is not a Search Console account set up for the particular website you are trying to link, you will be prompted to go through the steps to claim it. If you're looking at the left-hand navigation, I'm under Settings, and I'm under Specific Users and Permissions. While I have to blur everything out, this email is the same email that owns our Google Ads account. So we can see the permission right there is Owner. If you need to give instructions to whoever needs to add you to the account, there's the blue Add User button up here. You would enter in the email address and then leave the permission as full. So if you have admin access and are owner to Search Console, it is very easy to link these two just like I did. Let's say for whatever reason, if we didn't have Search Console access, instead of saying linked under the status column, it would say access requested instead of linked. And if there is not a Search Console account set up for that particular website, instead of linked, it will say not claimed. If you need to claim your website in Search Console, here is the link to Search Console where you can go and start that process. Once you have at least one URL linked, you will then be able to access the paid and organic report within Google Ads. To find that, go to the top navigation under Reports, go to Predefined Reports, choose Basic, and there's the paid and organic report. Super easy to find under like four layers, I know. Now let's get a look of what this report can show you. I hopped into a different account, and this one has already had Search Console and Google Ads linked for a very long time. And these are going to be the default columns you see when you initially get into the report. So the first column on the left, which I have to blur out, is Query. These are going to be search queries that users have actually typed into Google.com. Next we see the search result type. Was the query shown just for an ad? Was the query shown just organically? Or did the query trigger both organic and paid results? The next five columns we see, clicks, impressions, click the rate, CPC, and cost are all going to be related to the paid portion and then we get to the organic columns and I will run through this a little bit more just in case you're only used to paid media and not familiar with some of the organic columns. An organic listing is counted in this column when one of the pages on your linked website in Search Console returns as an organic search result. Organic clicks, the number of times someone clicked on one of the listings in the organic search results. Organic queries, it's a search on google.com, but an organic query is one that triggers organic results for your organic listings. And then we have organic clicks per query. It's pretty much what the column header says. It's the amount of organic clicks your listings receive divided by the total number of organic searches that returned organic listings. Then there's organic listings per query. This column will show you the average number of times an organic listing from the pages on your website were listed per search query. Then after the pure organic columns, we get combined columns. And yes, you guessed it, it's taking your paid and organic metrics and putting them together in these three columns. So it's combined clicks, combined queries, and combined clicks per query. Next to the filter, you'll see those two arrows that are pointing left. If we click on that, we can see a variety of other metrics and dimensions you could add to this report. But everything you see as an additional metric or dimension is not going to apply to this particular report. Because as I mentioned in the intro, this paid and organic report is only available for text ad campaigns. So we see options down there for hotels and shopping attributes. Those aren't going to be applicable to this particular report. You'll see if I click on the shopping attributes section, everything is grayed out. I'm getting the no symbol because it's telling me everything in here is not compatible with this type of report. There are really only a few different things that you can change on this report. I know time has some options. 
I added the weak one just to show you. So I added another row to the top. I'm gonna to remove that one. Under attributes, we see a few other options that we can add, start date, end date. Under performance, average CPM is the only option that we can add to this report. And then level of detail, search keyword. I'm definitely gonna add that one. And that's typically an attribute I add in my search query reports anyway. If I close this out, I can then go over some use cases of how this report could be helpful to improve your paid campaigns. One of the first things I like to do is under the search result type, you can click on the column header and choose filter. And then I can choose to just see organic search results. In order to see this one, I had to remove that search keyword column that I added because that is a paid only metric. And now that we're seeing just organic results, I may choose to search by overall listings. This time I'm sorting by the highest to the lowest. And then I can get a list of organic search queries that have triggered the most organic page results from my linked website. Maybe you wanna sort by organic queries. Now I'm seeing which organic search queries were performed the most within this date range. Initially, you may see some keyword ideas that are showing up organically that you may not have within your account. In some cases, I've found some longer tail keywords that showed up in my organic only listings that never popped in my head when doing additional keyword research. So now I've taken some of these long tail keywords, dropped them in the keyword planner, and then found some new keyword ideas that actually had search volume. Not only did I take the ones with search volume, but I also had new ideas that Google gave from research searching these organic queries, and that just gave me even more options to potentially test within the account. I'm gonna remove this filter really quick. And the second way I like to use this report is to try and see how well these two mediums are complementing each other. Because we know within the filters, I can segment the data by just ads, just organic results, and then the few combined columns that we do have. There have been several instances after we have exported all the data separately where we have seen search queries that have had a higher organic average position have been linked to some of our paid keywords that have had the higher click-through rates. And we have looked at this from both a brand and non-brand segment. Even taking average position out of the mix, we have reviewed combined queries and have seen overall higher click-through rates for both organic and paid when the query is showing for both ads and organic listings. We'll take this information to the overall marketing team if we ever run any problems or pushback saying, why am I paying for this keyword if we're ranking high for it organically? and our organic listings are just fine, why should we be paying for this brand name? Why should we be paying for this keyword? Besides just the real estate argument, we can now show them that there is correlation of higher engagement and higher traffic rates when these two channels work together, that they are actually helping each other out. And yes, we do understand that we're speaking about traffic here because we can't review conversion data within this report. Another filter option is going to query. And just like our search query reports, we can search for specific terms within that query. I just typed in one particular example here just to show you that you could do it. But maybe you wanna compare, let's say, brand searches between organic and paid. You can do that. One example of how we've filtered on specific search queries is for fairly recent product launches for a particular account. A client wants to know how they're doing organically versus paid. If they see that organic results and organic traffic are really low, for any queries for this particular new product, then we have the understanding of, hey, for right now, you're not getting that exposure with organic. Potentially, we need to boost our efforts with paid to give you the awareness that you need. That's just one particular example. As I go back up to the top of the columns, each column option can be filtered. You can sort it in a different ways. So there are a variety of ways that you can review the data that you're initially seeing in the paid and organic report. If you think this could be something of high value, you could save the report, download the information to share with any one of your team members, and also schedule it. So if you wanna receive this report once every month, you can get that report emailed directly to you or you can send it to whoever on your team may wanna see this report. Hopefully it's easy for you to link Search Console to Google Ads. Once you get access to the report, play around with the information. I gave you some examples of some quick wins you can do by looking at the information for a paid and organic account, but digging into the report yourself for your linked website might offer you some additional gems that we didn't talk about today that can really improve your paid search performance, but hopefully, your website's organic performance as well. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.